so much for joining us today. We are two friends in Amsterdam who knit a lot and also just like talking about life. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, our current projects and how they're fitting in with some changes in our lives this month. We're going to talk about a couple of Instagram feeds that have been inspiring us. And we'll be talking about a favorite three, which we'll reveal later in the show. And I'm going to kick off uh, the first section this time. So my current project is the Baby Bear Bonnet by Knitting for Olive. And I'm currently nearly completed. I'm just working on the last uh, I-cord tie. And then I've got some little ears to graft together in the back. And this is going to be for my new nephew who is still to be born, but he's on his way in the States. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. And I'm also uh, recently started doing Dutch classes again. Good of you, Matilda. I've been living in Amsterdam for five years and I think I, I did, I don't know, three months of classes when I first moved here. Yeah. Before I had a That's job. Not bad. That's not bad. Three months is, yeah. Yeah. But I've, since then, I've worked in entirely English speaking companies or organizations. Uh, all of my friends are fluent English speakers and naturally inclined to speak English with me. So I, my Dutch has really not progressed very far since uh, I last took class. How many, how many classes do you have? Do you have like one class a week or? Two classes. Oh, okay. Uh, Tuesday nights and Thursday nights. So yeah. it's uh, seven till 9.30 in the evening. And by 9.30 on a Thursday night, I'm just, I cannot even speak English, let alone yes. <laughs> Dutch, but I'm trying. Yeah. Um, so an, a nice, short, simple, pick it up, put it down kind of project like the baby bear bonnet is exactly where I'm at at the moment. And it looks like it's made with a very soothing, soft yarn. It's the Orkney Angora from St. Magnus, um, which yeah. I, I've used for a couple of different projects and had a half a ball lying about and it's delicious. It's It does leave sort of little white hairs all over everything uh, for the first yeah. while, but once it's, once it's been blocked, it should stop shedding a bit. But tell me, what yeah. have you been yeah. up to? Yeah. <laughs> I've made a major, major change, as some of you might know. I've stopped working for Stephen and Penelope. It was a, a very difficult decision. Um, it was quite heartbreaking, but I'm very it, excited for you. Yes, it it uh, it was time to do that. I've been uh, um, thinking about it for a while, and I'm, you know, I'm happy with the decision. But I miss my colleagues and. I miss being around yarn uh, during my work, <laughs> and um, but still, I'm still I'm continuing with my knitting. Yeah, I was going to say and you're still with yarn with your current yes. work. Actually, I have more time to do that now, which I love. I've noticed how fast you can finish a sweater if you have lots of time. I'm sure a lot of you will listen in envy. So what I'm knitting right now is um, the orchid uh, cardigan, my or my pattern. And this one is going to be a sample for Aimé from La Bien Aimé. Yeah. And it's knit with um, it's a, the Helix. I've showed it last time as well. Helix is a, it's a light fingering weight, lace weight, and a sparkly silk mohair head double. I haven't done that, even though it was a huge fashion to, to knit in this combination with silk my hair, I had, it's the first time that I'm doing it. And I really love it because it, it creates a very nice and even texture. So I'm nearly finished, second sleep. And tonight I'm going to lit the neck band on it and then I'm going to send it off. And I'm so curious to see how it looks. 
So that's that's my TV knitting project because that's like you can just follow a pattern. And then on the side during the day, I'm working on my next design. So it's going to be a sweater in, again, it's Helix, the same yarn, actually, without the slip, yeah, obviously, but it's head double this time. And it creates, mm. yeah. I love it, that texture. Oh, it's super addictive to knit it, these poppy thingies. Yeah, I'm very content how it's coming along. And I think it's going to be published maybe in two months i would say but the nice thing is if you're working for yourself and not on a submission for a magazine you can make decisions along the way and if you get a hand in a submission for a magazine you have to be finished with the pattern kind of it has to be finished how it will look like you can't afford to be spending weeks on oh i'm going to make the sleeve like this i'm going to make the color like this and yeah at the moment i'm very happy with this solution, which is a uh, yarn support, a generous yarn support by uh, La Bien Aime, and being able to spend time on making the pattern work exactly how the yarn want and the colors want to be. So yeah, it's more like an organic thing. Our next issue or our next subject is our favorite feed. Right at the beginning, when we started this podcast, we got a comment from our dear friend, Liddy. Uh, she said like, yeah, but it's nice, but it's not a lot about knitting, <laughs> which is true. If you look back in the last episode, but we can't, we can't help it. That's the stuff that we find interesting and we like talking about. And, you know, look at it like this. We like talking about this, watching this, listening to this, whatever we're talking about here while knitting. Yeah, so, you know, knitting ties it all together in the end, because uh, my favorite feed is not about knitting, obviously. Long I'm going to give you a hint, and mine's not either, so. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite feed at the moment is um, is a woman, she's called uh, Sabine Tim, but her Instagram account's called Virgin Honey. It's one of these accounts that you can scroll through and you you kind of click on every image because what she does is I think she started out with do you know these sandwiches which look like children's faces you know moms or dads make sandwiches to look like faces so the kids eat them I think she kind of like started out somewhere there and she makes little figures from food she makes drawings she photographs she collects trash at the beach and then makes little things with them. She makes little animations. They're adorable. And they're there's, adorable. There's so much soul and character in these sandwiches. I, it's just, <laughs> oh. Yeah. And so that's, that's, that's it's, you know, it's one of the feeds that you can always go to and it will just make you happy. And I also find her inspiring in terms of colors and fantasy and, uh, using imagination to create so that's that's my favorite feed absolutely um, yeah. my favorite feed at the moment is by it's called hello pansy and it's by a an australian woman who i actually kind of knew a little bit before i moved to the netherlands her name's alina tang and she is an artist and a ceramicist and a printmaker and at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, she opened her first shop. And the reason I've chosen Alina this week, I've, like I said, I've followed her for quite a long time, but I find her honesty and very cheerful um, outlook on social media to be pretty inspiring. But she also is very honest about the challenges she's facing, particularly as a small business owner in a country where she's just learning the language in and trying to negotiate all the difficulties of opening up a new store in the midst of a pandemic to be really refreshing. And she also just has a beautiful, cheerful aesthetic. She's um, really inspired by plants and, and flowers. And she has a really 
cheerful, joyful way of combining them. And actually for our uh, staff Christmas party at the end of last year, we all made one of her pansy packs, which is you get a little ceramic object and you can paint it and then take it back to her and she fires them for you and you get your own hand designed mug, which was a really lovely activity. And I think something yeah. that I thought was a lot of fun. So Alina is, yeah, inspiring to me on a lot of levels, I think aesthetically and, and likewise. I totally agree. I also really like the selection of kind, what kind of products she has in her sh shop. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, you can see it on the feed. It's, it's a great little shop. I like it. Yeah, and it's here in Amsterdam. So if you're local, I also recommend making an appointment and going and visiting. Yeah. Uh, well, that leads us nicely into our favorite three, which this time is our favorite three TV series to watch while knitting. I think it's really important to make that distinction because not every TV series is, is suitable for knitting. We both watch quite a few things with subtitles and I personally don't like to knit to a subtitled TV show, although you feel a little differently. And I don't like to knit to anything that's too dramatic and certainly nothing scary because I find my tension can uh, yes. show the effects of the- you mean, you mean it's not good for your gauge? Not good for my gauge. <laughs> Uh, but I, I did narrow it down. Uh, so my first one is an Australian TV show called Please Like Me. Uh, it only ran for two or three seasons, but it finished at a good point. I think they, they knew where they were at. And um, it's a comedy, but it's got some sort of very poignant drama moments going on. For me, it's quite a nostalgic view of life in your early 20s in Australia. I think those share houses that the characters live in are very similar to what my friends and I were doing in university. And it's just beautifully written, lots of very poignant little moments. Um, my second one is the Tales of the City reboot from 2020 or 2019. It was on Netflix. And again, it was, it was something I read the series by Amstead Mulpen when I was in my early 20s. So again, it's a little bit hitting of those nostalgia buttons, but it's been revamped for today's wonderful queer people who are living in that um, neighborhood in San Francisco. And it just was filled with joy and made me very happy to watch. And then my third TV show uh, is American Gods. Uh, and the third season is currently airing and it's being released weekly, which is a, uh, I guess, a, again, a nostalgic form of torture. I think we've become so accustomed to being able to watch episode after episode after episode after episode of a series that we find and then to be forced to slow down and to pace ourselves and to <laughs> to to relive that experience that you and I grew up with and and yeah lived sure. through. yeah so um it's also based on a book that I really enjoyed by Neil Gaiman so uh that is giving me a lot of joy I'm very um excited about yours because I haven't watched any of these. So I have now three new series lined up, which we can watch when we finished our current one. Yeah. Um, first of all, I'm a very, we're very strict one episode a night kind of people. I know we're the, we're minority, I think like, right. you know, even, you know, I'm going to top that, you know, we're even watching the intro, obviously, because we only watch one episode. You sick of it. Out of <laughs> we have to take everything out of this one episode anyway so and um i also have to say all of the three well two of the three of my favorites are subtitled they're probably going to be subtitled for most of our viewers because they're all very exotic but i'm i'm working stocky night right now so i can handle that okay. sometimes i can't if it's i couldn't knit a cable sweater on these 
series, except the last one. First one is called Stissel. And Stissel is an Israeli series. It is set in the uh, ultra orthodox uh, uh, culture in, I think, Jerusalem. The more you watch it, the, you, the more you get to know the people. And they're very endearing people. It's a very slow fa uh, paced series mm -hmm. and small things happen, but it's so fascinating to watch because the problems that they have are exactly the same problems that we have in our lives. And it's, and it's very, really well written, uh, sometimes awkwardly, awkwardly acted, but sometimes really well acted. And um, yeah, it's, it's very it's also very funny and um yeah we really really like we watched the whole uh series the episodes in uh, one go one episode each night strictly uh, <laughs> and obviously admirable self-control we don't and it's, it's super subtitled which is also very awkward for me because the uh when they talk yiddish i can like half understand it because it's related to german but I can't, so I kind of start knitting like this, and I'm noticing like, okay, I lost it already for a couple <laughs> of seconds. Um, okay, next one is Die uh, Pourcent, which is called Call My Agent in English. It's a French series. Yeah, I think so. Right. And yeah. subtitles definitely. Uh, it's a comedy, and it uh, it's set in the um, in an office that agents for actors. Vincent always says like nothing goes according to plan in that series. So each episode is some kind of drama. Some actor, <laughs> some actor causes problems, and the overall problem is that they have to keep the company going and have to prevent that uh, their clients are leaving the office, yeah. leaving the company. It's super funny. It has a lot of slapsticks, something that I've kind of forgotten to watch, but it's very nice. And the characters are, I love them all. They're my family. So that's Die Poussin. And the last one, that's the only one I can watch without the subtitles, subtitles because it's a German series and it's called Berlin, Babylon, Berlin. So Babylon, Berlin. And it's film. Uh, the, it's directed by Tom Tikwa, who's like a fairly uh, um, no, well-known uh, director, German director. And it's set in the twenties, thirties Berlin, mm. very exciting time. Yeah. Just when they started the de democracy, first time there was democracy in Germany, and just before the Nazis took over. And uh, it's a it is, I think historically it's one of the most exciting times in, in, in history, for at least for me. And uh, it's a crime story because it actually, uh, it's about, um, I think the mafia, the Russian mafia or something in, in Germany and about a murder have, has to be solved. But again, really good characters and just amazing, amazing, amazing music amazing costumes, amazing hairstyles, because they had to figure out like, how did hair work? They didn't have shampoo then, how would that look on your hair? It's just really, really well made. So that's my, uh, my favorite three films. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm really excited because now I have all these films of yours to watch. And likewise, I have all sorts of wonderful TV shows from you to watch. I'm really excited, especially about that uh, Berlin Babylon or Babylon Berlin. Babylon Berlin. Babylon. <laughs> well, you, you'll find it if you type it in. You'll find it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to, uh, yeah, I think you'd, you'd like it. Uh, guys, that's all we have time for today. But thank you so much for watching our episode. And of course, if you enjoy it, please subscribe to our channel, uh, give the thumbs up on the, uh, on the video. And if you have a particular TV series, which is your favorite to knit to, let us know in the comments below. And we will see you again next month. And Julia, I wish you a very happy Saturday afternoon. Yeah, you too. Enjoy, enjoy the beautiful weather. Sunshine, amazing. Finally. <laughs>